Hey girl, hey. Um, it's Friday, yay. I live for fucking Fridays. I don't care if I'm retired. I still live for Fridays and I still dread Mondays. It's a thing. Um, here's Huckleberry with his little bitey bites. Yeah, he's so cute. Um, he He's winding down. He's gonna be falling asleep here pretty quickly. Um, and then as soon as he does, no bite, no bite. No, as soon as he does, I'm gonna light up the bong. Oh, I think I spoke too quickly. He's coming alive. Fuck, he heard bong and he was like, oh, what, what, what you doing? What you got there? Can I help? Can I help? Can I take a puff? No, you may not. No, you may not. Um, so anyway, today, the thing that I wanted to jump right into, oh, strain of the day, OG Kush, ding, ding, dong. Um, pretty lively blend for me. I like it. Um, and then I'm supplementing with Purple Chem. I've never had Purple Chem before. Now is as good a time as any to try it. I'm gonna take a puff. Do a little heaty heat. Um, you know, there really is a learning curve to vape pens. There is absolutely a learning curve to vape pens. And um, the best pen that I've found, is this the, the Ooze brand? Yeah. It has the dial on the bottom, so you can very easily um, set and really customize your heat setting. Stop it right now, or you're gonna go in timeout immediately. Do you wanna go in timeout? All right, I don't wanna put you in timeout, but I will. Yeah, so this really allows you to customize your heat settings, and that's really, really useful because Different strains, different concentrates, um, they they vaporize at different heats and they're more impactful at, at various heat settings. They're not, it, there is sometimes no rhyme or reason to it. You just, you get accustomed to a particular strain and you know it likes to vape at a higher heat or a lower heat. So um, I'm, I'm only so-so with that. I, I only know a handful of strains that I know how they react to the, the heat of the vape pen. But um, yeah, definitely a learning curve. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a puff now that it's heated up. Oh yeah, it's really smooth. Um, I don't get into flavors too much. I really just go for the effect. Stop it right now, Bubby. I go for the effect, good boy. Um, I would say the flavor is fairly mild. It's not sharp at all. Um, in fact, I was kind of surprised. Um, I've been relying heavily on flour lately out of a bowl and out of a bong. I've, I've kind of fallen off the vape bandwagon. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot smoother than smoking flour, that's for sure. Come here, lay down, Bubby, good boy. Good boy. Yes, you good boy. He's probably jealous of me touching this. He's like, hey, that's a hand that could be scratching me. Put that down. All right. Okay, if you insist, sir. So I picked the purple chem just because it sounded kind of fun and festive. Like I said, I live for Fridays. I have an errand to go get knocked out after this. I am super amped and super motivated now that I have a course of action for it. Yesterday, I felt like I was like, looking over forms I hadn't seen in a long time and I was starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed by it, but now I'm good. I'm just gonna go get it knocked out today and get some exercise too. I'm, I'm gonna be walking about <clears throat> probably eight to 10 miles a day, maybe maybe 12, I don't know. Uh, but um, it's it's not terribly cold outside, good day to get, to get out and about, um, get some exercise, get some errands run, um, yeah, it's gonna be a really, really good day. A um, little cloudy, a little chilly, but but not deal breaker chilly, not in the teens. Um, I think we're looking at a high of like in the low 40s today. I'll take it, fuck, I'll sign me up. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna check while I'm talking about it. I looked earlier, but I kind of brained up the specifics. Uh, high of 50, okay, low of 36. Um, the wind's 11 miles per hour from the northeast uh, I would say the east northeast actually um, and yeah it feels like 40 outside and there's some humidity uh, pressures dropping okay yeah it should be should be fairly comfortable should be fairly comfortable um, 
later on, it looks like right around 7 p.m., um, 8 p.m., they're calling for uh, some pretty showery precipitation. But we'll see. I, I have to look into that. I don't, I haven't really, I can't remember if I looked at um, satellite imagery and radar this morning. Probably not, because I've been on, <laughs> I've been on like a uh, autopilot, <laughs> low speed, high drag version. I, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to go to this clip on Twitter of Trump talking some smack on, oh no, where did it go? Oh no, I swear to God I had it. Oh my God, no, I've got to start from scratch again. Um, stand by for just one second. It's a clip of um, Trump talking smack on Ron DeSantis uh, back in February. And I did some digging around and I've got some, I've got some cool shit to put out there to Santis, to Satan. I'm so used to saying wrong to Satan. Um, Trump, Trump insults DeSantis. Oh man. Okay, here it is. It was, it was linked in a Vanity Fair article and I'm going to read some of the article too. Um, again, full disclosure, I did not vote for Trump. I voted for Biden. I was not fond of him as a commander in chief, although I was grateful that he went to North Korea. That was a pretty fucking legit move. I, I said it even then. Um, and I'll say it now 10 times harder. Um, and now with everything coming to light with mainstream media and the things that I've discovered through my research and um, journalism over the past year, I'm definitely open to giving this, this guy, not necessarily my vote for president just yet, but I'm keeping an open mind as he makes his appearances and presentations and starts campaigning. I will say that I'm keeping an open mind to see if I can identify any glaring disparities in how he was characterized and portrayed by mainstream media before versus how he's being portrayed on, um, on a less, well, not necessarily less biased, but under, under, intense scrutiny mainstream media so um it's, it's just gonna be interesting so i want to play this clip and see what he has to say about the satan again this is about a month and a half ago and i it was posted to twitter because if you remember he had nothing he was dead he was leaving the right all right let me let me go back to it okay so i'm gonna start it over Ron DeSantis got elected because of me. You remember he had nothing. He was dead. He was leaving the race. He came over and he begged me, begged me for an endorsement. He was getting ready to drop out. That is a true story, according to multiple sources. On his knees, weeping like a baby for Trump's endorsement. Multiple, multiple sources. Credible sources. Not hyperbole. I'm just saying. This is this Ron DeSantis has his, I think, a Ranger card or an Airborne card or some bullshit like that or a SEAL card. I don't know. Like I did this SEAL training just for G Wiz, begging and crying to the point where um, a couple of the sources even said that um, President Trump was extremely uncomfortable with the weeping. Like, almost kind of like, uh, 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 yeah. Um, so just FYI, I'm going to press play again. Endorsement, and as soon as I gave that endorsement, in fact, I said, you're going to have a hard time. He's running against Adam Putnam, the commissioner of agriculture. He had a massive lead. He's been running for eight years while he was commissioner. He had $40 million in cash. I believe it was 40 and I mean, that's pretty practical advice. You know, um, you people might insinuate, well, he was running for eight years. He can't be that successful at running. But that's eight years of getting your fucking name out there in eight years of showing um, potential constituents that you're in it for the, like, you're in it for the long haul. That you're just going to keep going until it happens. 
So don't thumb your nose at that. That uh, many politicians, it's not uncommon, obviously, for many politicians to run for a particular office several times before they get elected to that office. Um, <clears throat> and the lesser known, um, the less affluent, um, the more true that is. So there's something to be said for that. So in the poll, massively by, you know, traumatic, but not catchable, not even catchable. He said, if you endorse me, I'll win. And there were tears coming down from his eyes. He said, if you endorse me, I'll win. I'll say, you know what, Ron? Ron was one of 150 people that would... Now, based on what these credible sources have advised me what happened or alleged what happened, um, Trump is being polite about the description of events. Trump is not going full throttle. Trump is simply reminding Ronnie, know your place, buddy. Television. I mean, Jim Jordan was the best and others were great, but he was one of 150 years that was on television and he was supporting me on the impeachment hoax number one and a little bit on the impeachment hoax number two. And then... And to be fair, this is before Donald Trump became aware that Ron DeSatan was heavily involved, is heavily involved, has been heavily involved um, in his indictment his with the DA in New York over those bullshit fucking charges. Yes. Imagine, imagine finding that out about the person that you endorsed um at at the witching hour their fucking hell mary you were their hell mary and they did that to you and you found out with conclusive evidence irrefutable evidence that they did that to you how would that fucking feel probably f doesn't matter if you're a president or a peon it would feel fucking lousy i don't know how to put them so we'll do it so I end up doing it, and he wins. I think it just ended. I'm not sure. Yep, it just ended. So I don't know if he caught the last bit, people not watching this from home, but he said he ended up, I ended up doing it, and he ended up winning in not so many words. Now think about the demographic of um, Florida. It's um, a, a varied demographic, but the one thing that Floridians seem to uh, agree on, and having lived there, and I was only there for less than a year, um, they seem to be more right-leaning, moderate to con like conservative. So just like right, slightly shy of right. And I a good example of that would be Dave Rubin. I think he's got a lot of like libertarian ideals. Um, and I, I definitely experienced that and observed that a lot in Florida. And, um, and not just in um, the white background, the white communities. I, I observe that in pretty much every community I um visited in, in Florida or went to in Florida. Um, so they, they, didn't, they do tend to be more moderate to right-leaning. And um, so getting that seal of approval from Trump, wow. Like, DeSantis clearly knew what that would do. Trump clearly knew what that would do. Um, and the waterworks is oh my god i oh i can't even anyway yeah i i'm just glad that somebody's calling this fucker out i desantis is a piece of shit and this might sound petty of me i do sincerely hope he runs for president and he loses so he can lose all that fucking money that's at stake yeah, it's going to be epic because then he's going to owe a lot of people a lot of money. And um, yeah, it's going to be really epic. Um, with that said, I also reached out to some sources who 
confirmed, or rather I have to be careful and say alleged, um, that Ron DeSantis has been accepting, not even accepting, actively vetting subordinates in the Florida National Guard for campaign contributions over the years. This is a thing. This is this is one of the secrets that is going to get out when Trump discloses all the information that he has on Ron DeSantis. And it's big. It's uh, people want to talk about like, oh, it's underage parties. That's just the light stuff. That Ron DeSantis is actually from what I've heard, pretty straight laced in that department. Um, and I, I honestly, I can't, I can't even see it and I can't stand the guy. Um, but I, I, yeah, that's, that's an easy sell for me to hear that he's straight laced and, um, but it's the other shit he doesn't want getting out. The financials. He has not been straight laced in that. Ron is an inveterate careerist, inveterate careerist. Um, and he has a body count. Um, literally, figuratively, metaphorically, figuratively, absolutely, absolutely, literally. Um, uh, well, I mean, I would say research and investigate the consultants on a few good men and um, investigate the author, the, the author's sister who gave him the storyline and plot exhaustively. Yeah, that's what I would say to that. Um, probably find a lot of interesting similarities. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's protected by a TSSCI read-in. Um, but yeah, and another source even alleged that Ron DeSantis has been propped up by um, Julian Ashiawit and Mike Waltz financially, and that's problematic. Like, Mike Waltz is also a subordinate to um, Ron DeSantis in a military aspect. Yeah, that's the that's the commander in chief of the Florida National Guard, of which uh, Mike Waltz is currently a member. Um, so it's pretty problematic and there these are pretty credible sources who allege that Ron DeSantis has been actively vetting subordinates in, in the Florida National Guard for campaign contributions and not just for him but for his buddies too so like when Mike Waltz was running for office um when it, Mike Waltz is a big one I have to do research on other potentials um Rooney Rooney's another one. They they actively vetted their subordinates for campaign donations. That is absolutely criminal, reprehensible, despicable, and should be immediately, immediately addressed. All right, anyway. Um, Ron came to me in desperate shape in 2017. This is a Vanity Fair article from Mar the 17th of March of this year. When I endorsed him, it was as though a nuclear weapon went off. That is true. Um, Trump's endorsement carried a lot of um, voting power for DeSantis. Absolutely. That's, I mean, you don't need to be a fucking, uh, statistic and anal statistics analysis at Honeywell to figure that fucking thing out for yourself. That's insane. Um, when I endorsed him, it was though a nuclear weapon went off. Trump told his truth social followers in November. When I hear DeSantis might run, and it's in brackets, so I'm just going to superimpose DeSatan over that in my brain. When I hear DeSatan, De Satan might run, I consider that very disloyal. He's similar, similarly fumed of the Florida governor's potential candidacy in January. I can't read. Trampy, I, I'm going to stop trying to read. I suck at reading. I'm, you know what? I have an eye appointment for next Friday. And then by this time, two weeks from now, I should have glasses and contacts. And also my, I got cotton now, so I should probably take a sip. That's probably why I'm, and then it got marbles in my mouth. And I don't need any help with getting marbles in my mouth because I already have marbles in my mouth. Um, 
All right, let's go to, I want to see what's going on, YouTube. YouTube. Um, history. So. Inclusion, Kalisa Wing. Are you familiar with the tweet? So I'm gonna. Can you please read the I'm gonna rewind Mr. Cisneros, are you? So it's the House Armed Services Committee holding a hearing on the impact of Department of Equity and Inclusion to the Armed Services, which there the Armed Services are have been spread thin financially for well over a decade, probably closer to two decades. Um, they can't afford to be creating these fucking baseless fucking departments that just lead to people getting promoted where otherwise there would not be no viable career progression. It's like, you can't do that. That That's completely obscene. Familiar with the tweet. It's both on the screens. It should be up there and right behind me by the former Dodia chief of diversity, equity and inclusion, Kalisa Wing. Okay. So, the tweet says, I'm so, exa I'm so exhausted at these white folks in these PD sessions. This lady actually had the caudacity. So instead of audacity, she made a portmanteau because that's what bougie fucking hipster bitches do. Um, she probably got like a brownie point from a grad professor for coming up with that in a paper. You go with your bad self, Kalisa Wing. Ugh. Anyway, caudacity, like Caucasian, fuck you. Um, that is deeply fucking racist. Fuck you, Kalisa Wing. Caudacity to say that black people can be racist too. Oh, well, that's ironic because I just called you racist, and bitch, you are. You don't, Kalisa Wing, let me explain something to you, sis. You don't define anybody's narrative for them, whether they're black, white, Asian, indigenous. Irish, Italian, German, um, you don't divine, define their narrative for them. So if I as a white woman come out and say that somebody was racist towards me, it's not your prerogative to dictate to me what the actual occurrence was. Yeah, I'm not your fucking child. I'm not under your fucking care, which is a good thing because you're clearly all about your fucking self. I pray to God you have no children. I don't usually go there, but I can tell with you trying to be look, looking all snatched in your Twitter profile pic. Um, girl, you got a fucking five head a mile long. I'm just going to call a spade a spade. Have your um, hair specialist lower that weave about, I would say, a solid inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, and you know what? If you can go there on white people and be racist... Yeah, I'm going to call your weave out. Lower that motherfucker. You can help that. You're probably paying like 2000 bucks for that shit. Lower that fucking weave and color cover that goddamn five head of yours. Girl, the only... Mm -mm, you cannot carry off that five head. No. 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 Um, the caudacity to say that black people can be racist too. Well, it's true, bitch. Um, I had to stop the session and give Karen the business... Bitch, you haven't been in the business long enough to give Karen the business. Yeah, Karen doesn't care for what you're sharing. Um, we are not the majority. We don't have power. Um, Kalisa, let me explain. Let me explain something for you, bitch. You are not like the black people who lived in my neighborhood. You are not like the black kids I went to school with and I was friends with and I grew up with. You are a bougie fucking princess from an entitled fucking affluent background. And you probably lived in a community that was very fucking affluent where you didn't have to worry about the things that the black kids that I grew up with in the communities where I lived had to worry about. So you can just shut your fucking cake hole. Stop manufacturing your selective fucking outrage. It's fucking disgusting. You don't get to define for anybody what their fucking truth is. And fuck you for that sloppy fucking portmanteau, you sloppy fucking second, second rate 
post-grad PhDSL bitch. I'm done with you. I'm going to press play now. Are you familiar with the tweet? Can you please read the tweet aloud? So exhausted at the white folks in these PD sessions, uh, this lady actually had the audacity to say black people can be racist too. I had to stop the session and give the care into business. We are not the majority. We don't have power. That's the right YS for assistance. And again, for the viewers who are watching this, this is the former chief of DEI for DODIA, for schools in our Department of Defense. This is wildly inappropriate and unacceptable. Do you agree with that, Mr. Cisneros? I do agree that that is uh, not acceptable. Uh, it's not condoned by, it's not something I would condone. And it's not con um, And let me guess, she still maintained her employment. Unacceptable. That means you condoned it. Condoned by Dodia or the uh, Department of Defense. Well, when I raised this issue, in fact, I wrote a letter to the Department of September of last year and did not receive a response. It was only when I wrote a follow-up letter on November of last year, we did finally get a response on... Um, so that's bullshit. DOD has to fo follow FOIA guidelines. That is extreme bullshit. This is an elected official. This is a congresswoman. Oh my God, it makes me look back in hindsight and realize I, I had, I, not only did I not have a chance, I had like less than infinity chances. A congresswoman can't even fucking FOIA information that she's authorized to FOIA. Oh my God. Well, I should say FOIA request. Um, I did, we always dropped it off at FOIA in the military. Um, it's insane. It's fucking insane. This is obscene. This is a perversion of, dem like, it is a perversion of justice. It's a perversion of democracy. It's a perversion of uh, the uniform code of military justice. It's a perversion of good order and morale. That these people that, from whom these elected officials are requesting this information, don't have the authority to decline to uh, revert with that information. Um, if it's not classified, if it's foyable, they don't have that authority. And they have, to, they have a certain amount of days. I, if I remember correctly, and it's been a minute, and it might vary from program to program, but if I remember correctly from my FOIA training that I had to do every fucking goddamn year, every two years for functional area records management, additional bullshit duties. Um, thank you, Brothers Goldfing, for fucking with the enlisted force structure that way too. Farm sucks. Farm sucks. So anyway, FOIA, I believe FOIA, um, the agency that you're requesting the information from under FOIA has 30 days to respond in writing um, with the information or why they are not returning with the information. And if I remember beyond that, they also have to give you the avenue for recourse. If you feel like you should be authorized to receive that information. This is a fucking perversion. This is obscene. These people should be immediately relieved of duties, immediately. In December, stating the department was conducting an inquiry into this matter. Today, six months after that initial inquiry, you responded three hours prior to this hearing, which is a trend for Biden administration officials at the last. I thought that was just something that happened to us enlisted force peons when we foiled shit. I had another witness from the 111th attack wing, Marianne Busted, who told me that she tried to FOIA the. Um, the reports from the congressional investigation that Houlihan and Dean, Congresswomen Houlihan and Dean, initiated back in no, July or August of 2020 after the story of the 111th attack wing's um, uh, culture of reprisal and retaliation uh, broke in several exposés in the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, starting with late July 2020, there was another one in August, and then um, I think a year later there were a couple more and then I think I vaguely remember seeing a follow-up article in summer of 2022. 
Um, so Marianne Buston told me, and this would have been close to a year and a half ago, two years ago, because I, I decided to discontinue contact with her too. It was just too much, too fucking much. The, the, the fear factor, and I was still coming through a lot of, um, a lot of healing and trauma, um, and processing trauma. I, I cut ties with everybody, um, except for, I think, one person from the 111th, ultimately, and that's D-dubs. Um, if I remember, there might, I don't think there's another person. I'm right, no, 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 I, nah. I, I have, in the interim, reached out to several people for inquiries and information and perspective um, for, you know, um, can't say. Anyway, um, so... Where was I going with it? Yeah, I thought that was something, like, Marianne reached out to FOIA the investigation reports that Houlihan and Dean initiated um, back in mid to late 2020. And she told me, and this would have been, I think it was right before I moved to Florida, so it would have been late 2021, that she was told by General Walker that the results are, would not be released. Uh, I just handed that man a year prior a metric shit ton of evidence. I want to know what's going on with that investigation. So, and um, Marianne also told me that she submitted a FOIA request and had not heard anything back on um, what was going on. That's disgusting. I thought that was just something us peons experienced. I didn't realize that congressional um, elected officials were getting that too. That is insane. And it's scrambling before these hearings, claiming that you determined Ms. Wing was speaking, quote, in a personal capacity and that her colleagues never heard her made similar comments at work. However, interestingly, in the letter, which I want to submit. Negative ghostwriter, when you are a public servant, everything is up for public consumption that and it's unfortunate i hate that it's like that because it's similar in the military on title 10 under the ucmj but when you are a public servant you know that that is informed fucking consent your life is up for public consumption um i'm gonna see what uh what this fucking asshole does exactly to see how far up on the public servant rank and file she is um, cause that, that will determine what size of bullshit grenade I need to pull a fucking pin from. Uh, Kalisa Wing. Oh God. Defense Department Equity Officer and author of Anti-Racism. Wing selected as D-O-D-E-A, Chief of Def- Oh no, no, no ma'am. She knows better. Everything you do is up for public fucking consumption at that position, at that level of office. Absolutely. She knows better. She absolutely knows better. This is not a mystery. This is, what this is, is a vulgar display of power because she was working within the framework of an administration who allows that to go on. For the record. It also states that she has been transferred as part of headquarters restructuring. She was reassigned to another position that does not include diversity, equity, and inclusion specific responsibilities. I have a feeling that... What that means in the public servant sector is she was probably a shit stain and probably fucked something up and became a liability, but she's so ingratiated into and enmeshed in the good old boy network that they can't, they have to carry her along. It doesn't matter how big a liability she is or what she fucked up and how badly. So they basically just probably created another directorate just for her. Yeah, they do this shit. This is how they do that. Um, that should have been immediate grounds for resignation. Immediate grounds. This is not a frontline... Um, uh, Department or diversity, equity, inclusion. I can't remember. I, they're going to change the fucking acronym in 18 months anyway. Um, and it'll mean something totally different. Uh, but this is the chief. 
this is the head of that entity. And she's making those statements. This is not some frontline worker who is probably not as politically read in as the chief of the organization. Um, this is not some 20 year old fresh out of college, oopsie. This is the chief of a federal agency. It's obscene. It has to do with the fact that we have shined light on this. But my question for you is, will you commit to making the review and the findings publicly available to Congress? Now keep in mind, because she's the chief, everybody below her is subordinate. Can you imagine being a white person or a black person who, you know, values white people too? Um, could you imagine? Or a, a, a black person who is biracial, has a white mom or a white dad or white siblings or children with a white spouse or a partner? Yeah. Not a comfortable fucking statement to, to have come out of your chief's fucking fingertips. Not at all. Not at fucking all. Horrifying. And to service members. Uh, Ma'am, you did get the uh, letter today. Uh, I apologize that it did not come sooner, but I will... You apologize that it did not come sooner? No. Fuck your apology. It is under investigation as we speak. That should never have happened. That, there is a reason why we have the FOIA. There, there is a, this is why we have FOIA. For transparency. This is exactly why we have FOIA. It was not anybody's prerogative in that agency to deny that information to that congresswoman without ex explanation and the recourse available to her to appeal that decision. That is just, it's, it's an extreme vulgar display of power is what it is. And it has no business taking up space in democracy. Indeed, indeed, this is the cancer that erodes democracy. We have to remove this malignancy ASAP. Say also, uh, my team has, has been down here, uh, the Dudia uh, team as well, to, to talk with staff on this topic. No, uh, there was the no director, response to the letter. We the were promised 30 of, days, uh, 30 days, days after September. Well, I'm glad I didn't fuck something up from my active duty farm days. 30 calendar days. I was right, y'all. Oh my God. Yeah, 30 days. You either receive the information or maybe uh, an explanation, information forthcoming, but it will take XYZ because of XYZ. Sometimes that happens too. Um, they might have to have like a higher reviewing authority to make sure it's okay to release the information, but you still have to provide a written response. Kind of like my Articles 138. It doesn't matter if the Air Force agrees or disagrees with them. They still have to do a legal investigation and they still have to provide me in in writing the legal findings, the conclusion of those Articles 138. Those are formal 138s, mind you, not the informal because you start with the informal and then you proceed to the formal. If I remember correctly on that, Air Force Legal under Sami Saeed um, spineless motherfucker, Air Force Legal, if I remember the exact time frame, had six months to revert in writing the legal findings of the Articles 138 that I submitted and on Colonel Barbara Buell's. Here's where it gets fucking ironic, y'all. Guess where Colonel Barbara Buell's got promoted to after I submitted, submitted those Articles 138 while she was in my direct chain of command as the um, deputy commander of the 201st Mission Support Squadron out of Andrews. That's who had um, uh, Title 10 authority of USAF combat drone Title 10 assets in the Air National Guard. Um, she received a promotion, which tells me my Article 138's never made it into her promotion board packages, which is absolutely unethical and under the UCMJ, prosecutable. Um, so I know that much. My Articles 138 did not make it into her board packages because if they had, all everybody sitting on that board would have known, oh shit, 
an enlisted person, a lowly E6 at that, owned her fucking ass. That's what it's, they're not necessarily going to get fired off an article 138, these G-series motherfuckers. Um, but it follows them in their board packages. And no, no officer, no officer, certainly not an officer who's been on G-series orders for that length of time that she's been on. She's been on G-series orders probably since the late 2000s, mid to late 2000s. And I did, I submitted the articles 138 in early 2020, the spring of 2020, winter, spring. Eh. Um, so yeah, what that tells a, a board looking over that promotion package for especially somebody going from 06 to general, are you kidding me? I mean, they do this shit for majors. Um, wow. She got owned by a piddly little E6. She's a liability. We got to hide her somewhere. She can't, we can't have, you know, we can't have this sore thumb sticking out. We got to make her the coffee pour or the XO of somebody at the Pentagon. So ironically, they just, they just created the um, DEI in, I don't know if it's the Air Force or DOD or National Guard. In fact, I'm going to look it up right now. Um, Barbara Bowles. And she is the fucking, she heads the department. This is the woman who came for me and slaughtered me over my mental health history. Unfairly, retaliatory. It was completely retaliatory in nature. Um, and he's easy to prove. I mean, no circumstantial evidence needed here, folks. Um, so I'm going to look at, she's a general now. General Barbara Bulls. Bullshit. Um, she's actually a very smart woman. Um, no photo. That's good. She's not very attractive. Um, Brigadier General Barbara S. Bules. Assistant to the Chief National Guard Bureau. So it's for NGB. This is a very, very high-ranking position. Um, NGB is, is one of the most powerful military entities that you have never heard of. Civilians um, not watching this from home. Uh, shit, a lot of a lot of active duty people don't know about NGB. I didn't. Um, yeah, NGB is a very it should it shouldn't even exist. It's ba basically the centralization of what should be decentralized state militias. It should not fucking exist. Um, if anything, it should be a broom closet in the Pentagon where one liaison sits. Yeah. The, it's it's insane. Um, so she is assistant to the Chief National Guard Bureau for Diversity and Inclusion, Washington, D.C. Yep, that was her promotion when she facilitated the reprisal retaliation against me. That's, that's how she was rewarded. Well, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I was rewarded for my courage. I lost my employment my career, uh, and I lost so much more than that. I, thanks to these sick motherfuckers, came very close to losing my life at a couple of junctures. Um, different story for no day. Uh, anyway, her assignment, and you can look this up, just, you would just type in the name and the, the first name, last name, sometimes the rank will help, and sometimes the branch, if you know the branch, and you can pretty rapidly access these people's fucking bios and kind of read between the lines. So from September 2018 to April 2019, Vice Commander, Air National Guard Readiness Center and Commander, 201st Mission Support Squadron, Joint Base Andrews, MD, and then April to 2021, present. So there was a big jump. She's got a period of about a year missing from this. And I can tell you where that year was. It was at the Air National Guard Readiness Center. She was still a 201st MSS. I mean, I've got the documentation to prove it with her signature block to prove it and the date stamps to prove it. Um, so there's no way to get out of it. So even though she's got this big, I'm going to just zoom in. If you look towards the middle of the screen, look for numbers 19 and 20. You'll see a year gap in there. I know exactly where she was in that year gap. She was making my fucking life a living hell for putting General Atomics on blast for their fraudulent MQ-9 contract with the Air National Guard and Major Chris McMenemy, specifically. 
Yeah. So there's a reason why they're not going to include that. April 2021 and to present, April 2021 falls right after March of 2021, which was when I had the um, unconstitutional involuntary admission to the VA hospital in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, where I was transferred 90 minutes out of state from my home of residence to this facility. And this facility was under the direct domain and um, supervisory and care of General Schindler. Yes, one of my former superiors whom I'd implicated heavily, as I've said before, in my um, my DODIG and DODIG reprisal and retaliation um, complaints uh, after I blew the whistle on General Atomics. Yep, yep, that's... That's a pretty telling discrepancy, Bobby, to leave out. Or to actually not leave out, to insert with invisible ink. I, I know what happened. She got promoted and she's now sitting pretty. Special assistant to the chief um, means she's probably likely got no subordinates into her. Um, unless she's got like a secretary or something. I would imagine Sandra Meyer who um, contravened her uh, clinical ethics um, by divulging my personal and protected health information with Bobby Bowles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I had a source come through and tell me that. Um, not that I was surprised. You're a piece of shit, Alexandra Marr. Um, yeah, Bobby Bowles is NGB's DEI person. I'm sure she didn't speak the fuck up when this lady opened her fucking clown car mouth and made that fucking comment about caudacity. Uh, Abney, I'm trying to mount this back on. I said mount. <laughs> I'm trying to put it on the little mag safe thingy. Okay, that doesn't sound any better. Um, so I'm going to press play again would be October. The director of schools, Tom Brady, was down on a hill to talk with staff as well. Don't cover up for the trend of the Biden administration. This is the second hearing in two weeks where the response to a letter delayed is given the day of or the day before the hearing with FBI director Chris Wayne. My Very important point to make. Stop fucking evading. Stop trying to outrun accountability, dude. Just stop. Nobody's buying it. Nobody's fucking buying it anymore. My question for you is, will you make the findings of this review publicly available to Congress and to servicemen and women? You know, Ms. Ms. Wing is a, is a GS employee. Um, she's not a senior executive. Uh, there are personal restrictions. There are restrictions. Is he fucking high? She's not a senior. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What, what else could, um, what else could, let me read this title again d-o-d-e-a chief of diversity department of defense education chief of diversity what about that is not directorate senior ranking executive smacking to you because i'm looking at that title and I know for, I, I went to DOD schools. I attended, let's see, I attended a DOD school in Grissom Air Force Base in about 1986, 87 for a couple months. And then we moved to Aviano Air Base and I attended a DOD school there. I think that's all that I attended. And I can tell you, attending a DOD school, even back then was the equivalent of being dropped on your head repeatedly as a baby. Um, I was so far behind, even for people not watching this from home, the area of Texas, the area of Austin that I lived in had historically low, um, I think we did the TOS test in Austin, I, or the, um, the Iowa skills test or whatever, I can't remember which test, but whatever test we used where I lived in Texas, both school districts, we used the not very, Iowa skills test. I can't, okay, I'm full of shit. I can't, might have been a toss test. Um, yeah, I tested very low. I was very behind in reading comprehension, math, social. I was behind in so many aspects 
um, so behind that even by the time I was in high school, and granted, I, I suck at math. I, I will throw that out there. I suck at math. Um, but I also had a very gifted teacher in 10th grade who was able to teach me fractions pretty fucking rapidly. And I wonder if I'd had that quality of teaching at a DOD school, if it would have taken, and, and I'm a slower learner, but I'm assuming the learning curve wouldn't have, let's see, I started learning about fractions, what, in third grade, I fourth grade maybe? The learning curve, fourth grade it was, I think, and I was like, fuck my life. I thought division sucked. Um, third or fourth grade until I was, what, 14? So, Jesus Christ, that's insane. That's insane. Um, two consecutive DOD school um, experiences. It is like literally being dropped on your head as a baby repeti repetitively. The only, and this is something I picked up by the time I was in fifth grade. Because I didn't know, I didn't know, even until I enlisted, uh, up until I should say I enlisted, I didn't know the distinction between officer and enlisted. And who would? I, of course I wouldn't know that distinction. distinction. Um, but I did know the distinction between pilot's kids and not pilot's kids because we had a certain group of kids who were pilots kids they are or officers kids but they were pilots kids this is a fighter base back in the late 80s early 90s um pilots kids lots of fighter pilots kids so lots of fighter pilots kids growing up with that fighter pilot mentality not pleasant to be poor white trash at that school no 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 um so poor white trash enlisted scum <laughs> Um, so, yeah, even I picked up, and I was not precocious or observant, I picked up that these kids were treated vastly differently from me. It's like when I spoke, I would get looked at like, why are you talking? Um, and it was something that I noticed that I, I don't think I've ever shared with my mom, or, well, definitely not my my stepfather. He didn't spend any time with us growing up. But, um, yeah, I, I, I noticed that by fifth grade. Wow, these teachers talk differently to the kids whose dads are pilots. And, you know, it was, yeah, it was very glaringly obvious to me. And it shouldn't be. But anyway, DOD school sucked then, and that was, fuck, I don't know, 35 years ago? I don't know. Shit, I can't math <laughs> But I'm sure they don't suck in, or that they're not any better because they've only been more and more retrenched as the years go on. So, and this piece of shit is proof of that. I'm going to press play now. Let's see what bullshit biscuits he's about to uh, propel out of his fucking mouth. Restrictions that we are have to follow, uh, but we will look into the matter as far as uh, to see what can be, what can be shared and what can't. Well, we're requesting that. Fuck looking into a matter. Investigate it, motherfucker. Investigate it. Yeah. Elected official. Congresswoman. Requesting information she's authorized to request and likely authorized to have access to. Um, yeah, that's a problem, dude. Yeah, initiate the investigation immediately. Uh, my next question for you is, have you read Kalisa Wing's books titled what is white privilege? What does it mean to defund the police? What is the Black Lives Matter movement? Have you read those books? I have not read those books. Are you aware, however, that those books... If you're hiring somebody for that position, the person applying for the job, the person pursuing the position, should understand the organization and what they're about. And I would hope to think the person employing would want to know that that employee is going to be a good fit for the organization, especially if it's supposed to be a disinterested, um, impartial federal organization. He probably didn't even know until today that she published those books, and that's a party foul. I'm pressing play now. Are in Dodia K-12 schools throughout the country? I do not know, uh, I can't say with certainty, I do not know that they are in those libraries at all or, or if they have been or if they are now. Well, they are. Do you think that's, uh, that's appropriate? I don't know for a fact. You have an elected official who can 
tell you and advise you on your program that you're supposed to be the subject matter expert on and you can't respond with uh, an answer. This is embarrassing. She's not the subject matter expert. She is she's supposed to be the subject matter expert on advocating for her constituents. She, you guys should know this information. This is the information she should have been proffered when she asked for it. But they are. They are. I'm telling you they are. That's why I asked you the question. You should know. You're a DOD official. I'm informing you. You should know the answer that they are available. Well, I... Um, on this episode of shit that you cannot make up, these are not conspiracy theory expectations. He should know. He's the goddamn subject matter expert. This is embarrassing. He probably just, I, I'm telling you, he probably just learned the titles of those books and that this woman was even a published author about, I don't know, 30 seconds ago. And one reason you should know that is because in her own presentation as a DOD employee at a DODIA summit, she stated, quote, my passion work is dismantling disparate discipline systems, and I am hugely passionate about dismantling the school-to-prison pipeline. I have written a book, Promises and Possibilities, Dismantling the School-to-Prison Pipeline. Shameless plug. That's her words, end quote. So while conducting her official duties as a DODIA employee, she advertised not only her personal social... Wow, that is immediate grounds for bye-bye. Immediate grounds. She's, she's peddling. She's trying to sell her own book while she's on taxpayer's dime at a summit with her registration fee being, being backed by taxpayers, her lodging, and rest assured, this woman... This woman is very used to luxurious accommodations, and that is her expectation that she should receive. The, this, we're not, for enlisted folks not watching this from home, we're not talking about the lodging that you and I would be authorized and directed to use. Nah, she gets a pass on that too. Um, business class in airfare, um, probably a stipend for her um, wardrobe so she can have a professional appearance, which I don't necessarily disagree with. You know, if generals get that stipend, if um, if senior ranking military official, officials receive that stipend for their office, I think that's fair. Um, or we could argue that they make enough money that they don't need that stipend too, so maybe not. Maybe not fair. Um, absolutely inappropriate absolutely inappropriate that should never have happened she should have been immediately terminated from her post that is grounds for termination i mean it's grounds for discipline for administrative discipline period and that she has a trend of doing it should indicate an escalating paper trail but that's not the case she's still you know as far as i know employed media accounts which included this tweet her personal websites, but she advertised her personal books. Are you aware that this is illegal for DOD employees to advertise and promote their personal books that they will? Not a conspiracy theory. I can tell you, I've rated on GS employees. It is illegal. In fact, for, for folks on Title X to pander to subordinates, in accordance with the UCMJ, it's prohibited. Yeah profit off of those sales? I, again, this was a book that she wrote in a personal matter. It was on her personal tweet, I guess, from what I understand. No, no, it was not a personal tweet. Saying. It was at a... Oh, my God. Is this guy, like, did he have a couple glasses of scotch before he showed up? This is embarrassing. Like, I mean, I... If I didn't know any better about these people, about DOD, and who they promote, and who they consider subject matter experts and leaders, oh my god. DOD Summit, in her capacity presenting as a DOD official, she promoted her book, and in fact she said, she stated this is a shameless plug for her book. Is that illegal, and is that appropriate? I don't know who she was talking to or what the summer was, I'm not aware. She just told you what the summit was. 
and that would give you, it should give you a pretty clear idea of who the audience was. How, like, oh my god. Can somebody put a fucking flow chart in front of this dumbass? I know how we got the job. He's a complete idiot. So President Biden can puppet him through the executive branch as he needs to. This guy's a complete fucking... He's an idiot. This, this is painful watching him not know how to fucking respond to something he should have known. And the person asking for the answer is the one giving it. And she should not be the subject matter expert. That would not be the fair expectation to have. In my humble fucking opinion. Pressing play. With that, but I can look into it and I'll get back to you. You seem to not know a lot of what's happening in the department. You seem to be inappropriate. Uh, so my expectation is that we'll continue educating you on what's happening in the Biden administration Department of Defense, but this is absolutely uh, unacceptable. We expect that report and I will take it as a result that we delivered, making sure that she should have been fired completely, but she was at least moved somewhere else, not dealing with our kids' educational systems. Well, there are restrictions that, again, she's a GS employee She's not a senior executive. Uh, Again, administrative discipline, um, disciplinary action, um, and an escalating paper trail. Yeah. She's had multiple incidences. And peddling, peddling her book and her orientation, her political ideology at the same time, um on official travel and official business. Oh my God, absolute, like, Congresswoman Stefanik is not an idiot. She, know, I can tell you, that is grounds for immediately, term. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't speak, immediate termination. Absolutely. For her post, for, her, for, for a GS7, if a GS7 was peddling their books in the break room, I would just, I pull them aside and be like, that's inappropriate. You can't be doing that. Here's why. Here's the, 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 the nitty gritty of why you can't do that and why you need to protect yourself. This woman is the chief of a department. Completely, completely different scope, completely different scale. That's obscene. It's an abuse of power. It, it's a vulgar display of an abuse of power is what it is. Pressing play. The inquiry did find that, uh, you know, these, the tweets that she made or comments that she made were not in line with the Department of Defense or Judea schools, uh, but they were made on a personal basis. Uh, th that was the result of the inquiry. And we will look into the privacy. Then it's time for you guys to forward that inquiry, including all the contents that were exposed throughout the course of the investigation directly to Congresswoman Stefanik, just as she has been asking for and waiting on for months and months, you fucking clueless tool. See that's in there and we will share, uh, we will look into what we can share and what we can't share. I'll yield back the chair. And in closing, what that amounts to is they're going to find out how to back sanitize um, based on how that hearing went. So when they do revert with the information, it just yields this positive picture of what is absolutely not going on behind the scenes. These people are corrupt. They're bureaucrats. Actually, you know what? They're, I have a better term for it. They're careerocrats. Bureaucrat plus careercrat. Car okay, bureaucrat plus career. Careercrats. Yeah. That's my idea. But I mean, I'm sure I'm sure it's been said before. I'm sure that's not a novel idea. It's not my idea. Um, anyway, I got to get going. I've got to run, um, run my errands and I uh, got the got this little poop machine asleep on me. Let me see if I can wake him up. Ducky, ducky. That's pretty. He, he's out. He's out. All right. Y'all have a happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Hopefully the weather where you're not watching from is absolutely stellar this weekend. It's not going to be half bad in, in Kansas City. So, I mean, it could always be worse. It could always be 30 degrees or 20 or 15 or negative. So I'll take what I can get. All right. Bye.